Welcome to St. Andrew's Worship at St. Andrew Presbyterian Church Sunday morning worship. We're so grateful you're here. We're growing in size. We, this, the, the young guys here is like growing. It's like four people. Trust me, this is like growth. Okay. <laughs> uh, but we also have uh, folks online, so we're deeply grateful. This Sunday, the, this, this Sunday month is called Hallelujah Anyhow because we're talking about Thanksgiving. And we'll be looking at the ways in which we're gonna thank God even as we're going through some times that might be challenging. And so now we always start our service with the heart song, uh, which is something that Lori Garrett Kavina brought to us as we prepare ourselves and allow folks to keep coming. So let us start with the heart song, Joyful by Dante Bowie, uh, which I haven't heard, but apparently is pretty interesting. All right, let's go for it. Said I woke up to the summer shining through, calling on my friends asking what's the move. Feeling a little different, I'm on something new. Today, today, I ain't gonna let no clouds get in my way. The only road I'm walking is the one I picked. Catch me sitting in the sun, no time for shade. Today, today, Ooh. this is the day that the Lord has made. And I ain't gonna let it slip away. I'm gonna be joyful. Joy. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm gonna be joyful. Joy. Today. Today. I'm gonna be joyful. Joy. Ooh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, gonna be joyful. I got the feeling that you get when you get new kicks. Bell ringing on the last day of singing, yeah. High fiving everybody, but we out of here. Today, today. So fast, life comes and goes. Make it last, best slow your road. They don't take it as a choice, but you gotta know that today's, today's the day. Ooh. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I ain't gonna let it slip away, nah. I'm gonna be joyful. Joyful. Gonna be, I'm gonna be joyful. Joyful. Today, I'm gonna be joyful. Yes, I am, yes, I am. I'm gonna be joyful. Today, today. I got the joy down to my heart, down to my heart. Down in my heart, I got the joy, joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I got the J O Y down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I got the joy, joy down in my heart. Two ding, two ding. Good morning. Good morning. For our call to worship, I was glad when they said unto me, "Let us go to the house of worship." and praise the lover of our soul and the lifter of our heads. We lift up our we, heads, hands, and our hearts, and, and our, our voices, voices to worship the, the creator and sustainer, and sustainer of all, all that, that we have and, and shall, shall ever be. It is. Let everything that, that hath breath praise, praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah anyhow. Gracious, gracious life-giving God, you call us to live out our faith in ways that honor you and bless our neighbors. And we recognize that worship is an essential part of our faith journey. We believe that what we do here in worship does shape our daily witness to Jesus, whose disciples we profess to be. We know that our faith is most visible when we live by your kingdom values of love, justice and peace and so this morning we pray that in our worship the unfailing treasures of your kingdom will shape and reshape our hearts and that our discipleship will be clear in our worship our witness and our service this day and in the week to come this we pray in jesus name amen, amen. Good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. I don't know about you, but I've decided to have the joy, joy, joy. 
down in my heart. Is there anybody out there that have decided to be joyful today? Let's sing together, joyful, joyful, we adore thee. The first version will be the original arrangement from Him to Joy, arranged and taken from the works of Ludwig van Beethoven. And the second time we will do the arrangement of Quincy Jones, joyful. Joyful Lord, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flies before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, feel love. Fill us with the light of day, light of day, yes. Amen, amen. Call to confession. God of tender mercies, we admit that sometimes we don't know what to do with ourselves. We anger at the slightest insult and imagine great vengeance upon those who wronged us. We laze about in the good news of our faith and do not consider the deep commitment of faith. We care for ourselves, but not for others. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us, help us to repent and make us whole. Amen. Amen. Now is the time of silent confession. Friends in Christ, know this, the mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting, and I remind you of this surpassing, surpassing grace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Jane and Raymond, this song is just for you, with everyone else joining in. God is a good God. Amen. 
Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Esther 1, verses 1 through 12. This is what happened during the time of Xerxes, the Xerxes who ruled over 127 provinces, stretching from India to Kush. At that time, King Xerxes reigned from his royal throne in the citadel of Susa, and in the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials. The military leaders of Persia and Medea, the princes and the nobles of the provinces were present. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet lasting seven days in the enclosed garden of the king's palace for all the people from the least to the greatest who were in the citadel of Susa. The garden had hangings of white and blue linen fastened with cords of white linen and purple material to silver rings on marble pillars. There were couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other costly stones. Wine was served in goblets of gold, each one different from the other, and the royal wine was abundant in keeping with the king's liberality. By the king's command, each guest was allowed to drink with no restrictions, for the king instructed all the wine stewards to serve each man what he wished. Queen Vashti also gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. On the seventh day, when King Xerxes was in high spirits from wine, he commanded the seven eunuchs who served him, Mehuman, Bizda, Harbona, Bigtha, Abigtha, Zethar, and Carcass, to bring before him Queen Vashti, wearing her royal crown, in order to display her beauty to the people and nobles, for she was lovely to look at. But when the attendants delivered the king's command, Queen Vashti refused to come. Then the king became furious and burned with anger. Thanks be to God. I've had some good days I've had some heels to climb I've had some weary days And some sleepless nights But when I look around and start to think things over, all of my good days outweigh my bad days. I've decided I won't complain. Sometimes my clouds hang low I can hardly see the road And so I ask this question Why so much pain? Hey. But he knows what's best for me Even though my wish I'll just say thank you, Lord. Hey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. My God, your God has been so good to us. God's been so good to us. Oh. Could ever be God, God has been good to me. He wiped my tears away. Glory to God. God has turned my darkness into day. 
And so I've decided to say, I hope you've decided to say, thank you, Lord. In spite of everything, thank you, Lord. No matter what the doctor says, thank you, Lord. No matter what my money looks like, thank you, Lord. Hey, hey. Glory to God, thank you, Lord. I won't complain. About your God, but my God has been good to me. <laughs> I'm so glad He's been good to me. So much more than this world could ever be. My God, He has been good to me. God, wipe my tears away. He turned my darkness today and with Jesus I can say thank you Lord <laughs> it's hallelujah anyhow thank you Lord <laughs> thank you Lord 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 hallelujah I won't complain God 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 has been good to me to me. He's been so good to me. More, more than this world could ever be. God, hallelujah, he's been good to me. Raymond, he'll wipe your tears away. He'll turn your darkness into day. I want to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, anyhow, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, no matter what, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, I won't. I made up in my mind, I won't. I won't complain. Glory to God, hallelujah. I won't complain. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I won't complain. How do you get to a place that you just won't complain? We're in the time of Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving always seems to me a wonderful month, but when you think about it, people are kind of making you be thankful, you know? You know, they got the turkey out, and you put it around, and no matter what kind of, then they go around the table, and everyone says, what are you thankful for? And that day, you could be in a bad mood, but you have to come up with something. You know what I'm saying? Oh, y'all looking at me. So no, all of you have always been thankful every day of your life. <laughs> Actually, it's hard to get to that point. Yet it is a point that God calls us to. And so over the next few minutes, I want to teach you not only we're going to talk about Vashti and the vindication of Vashti, but I, there's one scripture that I want you to leave here with. And we're going to say it together. I'm going to say it to you. You can say it after me. It's not a long scripture. God works in all things for my good. Romans 8, 28. Now, it's not God. Is, God works in all things for my good. Say it after me. God works in all things for my good. Oh, y'all kind of said it. Online, do you get it? All right, let's try it one more time. Online, unmute yourself, everybody. Let's try to say it together. Because if you go nothing else from this service, you're going to do this. God works in all things good. Okay, mute yourself because we're not going to. That's wonderful. But did you hear that text about Vashti? Did you hear that in the midst of it? Because quite frankly, we have to embrace all things with thanksgiving to get to a point of thanksgiving. And it's hard to do that, especially if you have regrets in your life, especially if you remember the things that have gone through that haven't gone through very much. You ever gone through something and think, what was that about? Or you're going through things and you, and you, feel, you, you feel somehow kind of embarrassed, ashamed, and if you hold on to embarrassment and shame 
and you hold on to that for very long, it will steal your joy. It will drain you of the ability to stand forward because you were always thinking about the regrets of back. And worse yet, when you look at something and you think you've hurt somebody. By the way, act like you don't know what I'm talking about so no one will know that that might be you. You've hurt somebody. How do you let go of that? It can haunt you. We just came out of, 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 we just came out of Halloween, and those are the real ghosts that kill you. The ghosts of regret. That I hurt somebody, that I could have done better, that I should have done better. And in the midst of all that, we say, say again, all things. God is working in all things for my good. How is that possible? And that's why I believe the book of Esther is there in the Bible. The name of God is never mentioned in Esther. Never mentioned in Esther. This is about choice and God moving through our choices. So that's even a good thing or a bad thing, but that's a, it, Esther is happening not like the Bible, but like life. I want to say that again. You know, we, we teach the Bible stories and we, we, we have, because we, we know the end. Esther is actually happening in the key of life, which is just choice after choice after choice after choice that you hope is working out. And so Esther, this book that has become the basis of a holiday in the Jewish tradition of Purim, this book that has become celebrated every day, and just like the men we are, we only remember the men in that book. Even though it's named after a woman and the two biggest protagonists are women, Esther and Vashti. But we know Mordecai, but we name children Mordecai. And we know Hanan, we actually have a sound and we do those little sh 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 around as things. But, but you know, these two women for whom the book is named after, we don't talk about. And the reason that is important is to remember because look at the arc of what happened. I'm not gonna go over the story again, except I wanna point out a couple things because I am going over the story again. Vashti is a queen. He is a king. They're both born in the system where they're at the apex. He is a big deal. Not only of his nation, but all the other nations also. He, we think he may be a person of color because look at the nations that he's over. And he brings them all together and they have a raucous good time. And then after having a raucous good time, they go ahead and they drink for seven days. And they get the big idea when men get together sometime, I know this will shock you, sometimes the longer men stay together, our you know, IQ goes down. I don't know how that happens. Especially if you put a little drink in it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what happened in seven days. And somebody came up with a bright idea, probably the king, to one of uh, say, Let's bring the queen in here. Now, note in the text it says, and she shall come. And this is what's important that you understand. And this is clear from the translation. He told her to come and present yourself wearing the crown. But actually in the text it says, and only your crown. He wanted to come in there among all those drunk men and wear only her crown and be naked. And she said, I don't think so. No. And the reason she said no is because at some point you come to a point, she'd given out a lot, to be a queen in a system that is sexist and difficult like that, you may have had to give up a few things, but at some point you come to the point where you say enough is enough. She's a queen after all. I like with Sister Andrea, she stopped me in the parking lot. We, we, we do this on Wednesday night too. And on Wednesday night, our, our, our theologians of this congregation, they throw their two cents in. And Sister Andrea stopped and said, she was a queen. Let's remind you that he may be something, but she was something too. And at some point, she decided, you know what, you will respect me. But she knew the danger of doing that. And when she did do that, 
He then, in his brilliance, talked to men to explain a woman's action. Not a smart thing to do. Why is it? Why is it? He brought all the, the, the other men and said, what should we do about it? Now, I contend that if he had talked to the women, he may have come up with a different solution, but he didn't. And remember, these men had been drinking, so he actually called drunk men together. How was that going to work out? What should we do with her? He, the king. Oh, you oh, you got you missed something. The king, the dude with all the power, the guy who literally had the choice in the matter instead of standing up and making a choice and instead of doing something, he calls the men and he gives away his choice to the men. What do you want me to do about her? Well, throw her out. Because, and, then, and I get, go home and read this. Here's their reasoning. I kid you not. I am not lying. It says this in the text. I would have had it read longer, but we got to get out of here. You know their reason? Because if you don't take care of her, all the other women might decide to be free too. They knew that they were wrong. And they're like, we have to stop this before there's a revolution of freedom going on here. Read it. Can you imagine how she feels at the end of this? She did the right thing. She stood up for the right thing. And she ends up going back home being banished. And the only reason she didn't die, be very clear, and Sister, and, and, and Sister Andrea hit it is because she was the queen. Which means he didn't want to deal with her people. So what he said is, you go back home, and you never come back to this land again. And she goes back home broken because you knew all the men back home said, what did you do? Isn't it amazing that when you stand up and do the right thing, that the very people that you might have stood up for sometimes put, get on your case? Isn't it amazing how when you stand up and do the right thing, you become the villain? She goes home, and we don't hear about her. We don't hear about a party. We don't hear somebody say, hey, baby, come on. I'm so sorry that happened to you. It's as if she's thrown to the side, thrown to the side by the men who wanted to see her dance and thrown to the side by her husband who wouldn't stand up and then finally thrown to the side by her family who wouldn't stand up for her. God works in all things for our good. Now you see how hard that is to believe. And why is that the beginning of this book? Because the king decided, okay, we're going to break the thing. And the next queen that will come to the throne does not come in the same way she did. The system was broken. The system was broken. Well, it didn't work this way. Now we're going to have a contest, and now the king's going to choose on his own who to be king because that, that, that marriage was a political alliance. Now he's going to choose somebody on his own. He chooses someone, and he gets someone who he didn't want to get. Here's what's funny. Here's what God does. God has a sense of humor. Okay, maybe it's not a sense of humor to God, but it, it, it does look like it to me. Of all the women who comes before them, the woman that he chooses is a Jewish woman of no heritage and has no people with no power, and God puts that person in his life. And guess what happens? He comes again to the point of decision. I'm cutting because we, we have to get to the communion. But again, very quickly, Another crisis arose, and <laughs> the king has another chance to do the right thing. Oh, y'all missed that. God has a way of allowing us another chance to do the right thing. The joyful thing is just because you messed up the first time doesn't mean you have to mess up the second time. Or just because you mess up the second time doesn't mean you have to mess up a third time. Or you're not getting the mess. No matter how many times, God will keep on giving us an opportunity to grow. That's why when you're in AA or you're going through something and you fail and you try and you're like, oh God, I messed up, I fell again. Good news, God's going to give you another chance. 
Good news, you're going to have another shot. I don't understand. I thought I'd messed up. I thought it's all terrible. I thought it's wrong. It was. <laughs> but the good news is every time you stand up and fell down, you say this to yourself, I'll never let that happen again. Now, it's a lie two, two-thirds of the time, but at least it's a hope in yourself to do that. But notice then what God does. God arranges for his life a different kind of woman. Y'all miss that too. But God puts in his life a queen that will not wait to say no in the end, but says no and understands herself differently. Who's not politically beholden. This is why first, second, third, fourth marriages are different, right? Because quite frankly, we hope that the people who failed the first one learn something. Y'all looking at me? I mean, we hope you were smart enough the first time, but truly, after a while, you go through this, you learn something. Oh, I'm not, how do I make this clear? You're not scarred from the divorce. You've learned through the divorce. You're not scarred from the pain. You've learned through the pain. God can redeem the moment of your worst day of your life and make it the best thing of the rest of your life. God can teach you how to choose somebody by having, because you chose badly the last time. And now this time, you know, remember what I said you say to yourself, not going to let that happen again. I see that coming, and I'm not going to do it again. This woman, Esther, she, unlike Vashti, had somebody in her life that cared for her that didn't give a rip about politics. But you see, it's a, it's a day, uh, how can I say this in a nice way? When you have someone, or some God will put someone in your life that doesn't value the things you value, but value the things that you need to value. You understand? Because love allows you to grow in new ways. Love is dangerous, y'all. Because love means you do stuff that you wouldn't do. It means that you allow people into your space that you wouldn't let do. And somehow, Vashti was a political marriage. But this was a love marriage. And when love's got something to do with it, it's a whole different thing. And so, but the problem, so the problem happens when he comes and he's going to kill her people. Mordecai writes and sends somebody to her and says, look, you got you to talk over to the queen. And the queen says, who, me? <laughs> Not me. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I'm just the queen. And I remember what happened to the last queen. Because the last queen, she had people to protect her and she still get kicked out. The last queen, she was thrown out because of who he was. What she did not understand is that God was working in all things for his good and her good. For the last time, he blew it. You see, regret is not just something victims feel. It's also something that when perpetrators grow, they also feel. This is the thing about grace. This is the ugly, difficult thing about Christian grace. That even the worst person, God gives a chance for redemption and could change. This dude who was, I'm trying not to use the word pejoratively, but he was a wimp. Let's face it, he was a wimp. He could have stood the first time, but he didn't. But now this time, she didn't know she was dealing with a different man. She didn't know she was dealing with somebody who had grown, somebody who had regretted, and instead of being just regretful, he decided, I'm not going to let that happen again. And so she was all worried. But then she said to herself, and we preached that last Sunday, if I perish, then I perish. I'm just going to do the right thing. I'm just going to go up in there and see what happens. And if I die, which looks like I'm going to do it, at least I'll do the right thing. But what she didn't know, y'all know now, God's working in all things 
for her good. And as you know, last Sunday, from last Sunday's word, yes, I am trying to have you go back and, and listen to last Sunday's sermon. I am doing that. But, if, but, if, but you, if you listen to last Sunday's sermon, then you remember that it wasn't just her good, but it's for an entire people's good, for the furs of the world. Or you're not getting a message of the pain. You're so fearful about going through something again that if you stop and don't do it again, you'll never be blessed the way you should be and other people around you won't either. So she goes to him and she says, you ain't called for me. And I know what you did with the last woman, but here I am. And you know what he does? He recognizes here's his second chance to do the right thing. So the question isn't whether God was working. It's whether he recognized God was working. That's why we have to continue to be in the right spirit, not because we need to feel good, but it allows us to have the freedom to do and to move forward. Remember I told you the danger of regret, it stops you from doing what you ought to do. It makes you fearful to move into the future. But when you say, you know what? Yes, I forgive myself. Yes, I messed up, but God's given me another chance and I might mess up again, but I'm gonna try again. We tell that to everybody who's been addicted. We say, okay, you messed up, but try again. We tell that to everybody who fall in love again and who say, but you don't know it didn't go out the last time. You don't understand how bad the divorce was. You don't understand what he said, what she said about me. We say, try again because God's working on your behalf. We say that to everybody who has decided that I have been burned. But God is working in all things. Imagine Vashti thinking she failed, thinking she's terribly messed up, and she changed the entire system. She changed the man. She encouraged the woman, and she changed the system, yet she never knew it. That's why it's a faith proposition. I would that I could sit here and preach that, man, you're going to, everybody that you helped is going to come back to you and say thank you. Everybody that you, that you had a good, op, they're going to throw their hands around you and say, I would not be who I, no, that's not going to happen. Over half the people you help, you'll never know they help, so you have to have the faith to live by your faith rather than live by the, what the reaction is of others. And rather than live by your own history and fear about what you should have done and know that God is a loving God that will give you another chance. God is a God that keeps caring for you. Now, I'm telling you, those Bible study folk, our, our theologians at the end of our Bible study about this, I'm trying not to cry. Margaret and Gordon started talking about their relationship. They said very plainly, I remember Gordon said, this is us, this passage of scripture. We have both been through a scarring marriage. And if we had not believed that God was working, we wouldn't have had over 40 years of being together now. What is it that's keeping you? What thing is holding you back in fear? Because maybe you hurt somebody or you messed up the last time. Hear now the good news. God is working in all things. So you blew the interview, go to another one. So you messed up and dropped out of college, get back in there again. But you don't understand that, not because of what's happened to me, and I know it's a wonderful thing when I get to preach about injustice that was done to you. You know what I'm saying? I hate to say, that's a good thing, right? Look at those people, what they did. You know when you messed up, it's harder. 
When you fail, when you know, Lord, I should, no, I shouldn't have had it. That's right. You know, I blew it, right? It's that moment where you stand in faith and you say, God is working in all things. Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah. I'm going to believe God on this anyhow, not because I deserved it, not because I made a good, because I know that God is working. If God is working in Vashti and in that circumstance, in her almost rape and in her standing and rejection of everybody else, God still was working in her. God is working in you. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. When I don't feel it. Hallelujah. When I think I'm failing. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Because of God. This is what it means to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. It's to say. It's not what I've done. It's what God is doing in me, through me, and for me. That's changing the world and changing us. So we start the series with Hallelujah Anyhow. Running towards the communion table. Reminding ourselves this cup and this blood. And I'm going to say something. And you, I'm sorry to slip into the African-American you know, jargon. But we're going and we're saying we bad mama jammers. We are, we, I, you can't keep us down. We can't even keep ourselves down. <laughs> you can't, we can't even mess ourselves up. Amen. Oh, y'all missed that. We can't even, can you, I mean, come on. You can't even mess yourself up. I mean, you can't stop me from racism. You can't stop me from sexism, but I can't stop myself from stupidity which is more universal, but I can't stop myself even from that because God is working even in my stupid, ridiculous, messed up, can't do right stuff. God is working. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Come on, Mrs. Sister Carolyn. the screen up for, up for offering and for giving and you'll see the many ways that you can give online as well as in the person in person god in the name of jesus we thank you for every dollar that is given online and in person here we ask now that we use it for the kingdom of god and it returns back to the kingdom and the people of god pressed down shaking together and running over and the church said amen all right there we go sunday school uh, we're going to try to begin it at the uh, Advent. We were, we've been back and forth on dates. I think the Advent date is perfect. We'll start to do that. So if you have a family who's like anxious to get back to church, don't be laughing at me. You could have a family that's anxious to get back to church, uh, who's anxious to get back to church. 
or you have someone who's anxious to have kids so they can have some time in church, please bring them. Um, and we're going to do some fun time. I, I miss kids. I, I love kids, and it's kind of fun to have them around. And so we need the, the joy and the pleasure of the kids coming back. So slowly and surely, we're waking up again. And so, Kevin, you are the poster child. I understand. <laughs> This is what can happen to you <laughs> if you go to Sunday school here, you know. <laughs> Kevin's not looking back at the camera. You notice that? He's, he does not want to become the poster child. But I'm telling you, that's that's what happened. They do grow up. They grow in grace. We know that, um, uh, Frank, we've got your son with the little one who, his kid is, uh, he was this small when we kind of dedicated him this big now. Uh, <laughs> uh, we really like, so, for, so please bring your children. Uh, we really, really, really deeply appreciate that. And come on and be there. Also, last thing that we don't have a slide for this. We're still looking for you to turn your cameras around and talk about your encounter with Jesus. I know you're scared, but don't. Just talk about your encounter with Jesus. We want to use them next Sunday. We're going to have a bit of a, again, hallelujah anyhow. We had an amazing, amazing night of testimonies in this church from the from the community uh, about mental health and about getting through and changes. We're going to have some of those uh, testimonies uh, that are going to be on, um, that you can see. Please come next Sunday. It's a great part of uh, St. Andrew ministry. It's a new part of St. Andrew's ministry. And I will tell you, they will blow you away. And by the time you finish, you will say hallelujah anyhow. That things don't have to kill you. They can actually make you better as you go through it. Just don't stop, right? Because God is working in all things. Amen? And so now we're going to ask, yep, yeah, I'm sorry, Sister Wanda. I, I thought, no, <laughs> I just thought maybe um, people here would like to know that next Saturday um, at Gateway Shopping Center, um, Marin Ship 80th, the whole year is going to be devoted to the 80th year of uh, Marin ship and the Marin City youth have put together, um, they're called the Marin, Marin Evaders and, they ha and they're telling the stories of uh, particularly the African American workers who had been at the shipyard and the things that they went through and their contributions uh, to the Second World War when Marin ship was in uh, Sausalito building the ships for the Second World War. And it's, they've been working really hard and they've done a wonderful job of putting together. Uh, they've done different kinds of things, but next Saturday from 12 o'clock till three at Gateway Shopping Center, um, 110 um, Donahue, which is across the street. Yeah, of course. So I just like people to come out and learn a few things about that particular era here in Marin City. So I think it would be a, a good thing to uh, get information about that. And if you'll send us that, that announcement, we'll send it out uh, in before then, because we obviously didn't get the oh, we, we didn't get the worship service out this day. So we we owe you one. So we'll send that out. <laughs> uh, sorry about that technical difficulties, uh, but we worshipped anyway. Uh, so Sister Ellen uh, is going to come. Please, everyone, stand for for the uh, affirmation and uh, prayerfully so that we can do the affirmation and after that a benediction and now the affirmation of our parish purpose the spirit of the lord is upon me anointing me to preach good news to the poor sending me to proclaim release to the captives and the receiving of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. Amen. While we're still standing, we want to thank Sister Ellen for uh, leading us in worship this morning. Amen. We want to thank Sister Margaret, who was amazing, and thank you for helping leading us in communion this morning. We want to thank also Sister Carolyn for an awesome, awesome song. Didn't she just sing? Amen. Praise God. And and those and those and those and those uh, those those video selections is because we have someone who's under 18 helping us choose videos because half those people I didn't know. Uh, so Joelle did an awesome job. And then we want to thank the technical team, praise God, for Carl and 
Andrea and Gordon, praise God. And of course, we want to thank the two faces you saw coming in the door. They're perfect, amen. Sister Loretta and Sister. So thank you so very much, Miss B. Thank you, Sister Loretta and Miss B. So again, thank you everyone for being here today. Come back next Sunday. Bring somebody new to with you. How about that? Amen. Praise God. So in the name of the creator, redeemer, and giver of life, go forth from this place knowing that God is working in all things for your good. Go forth in Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah in it Never, never let your troubles get you down When life's troubles come your way Hold your head up high and say Hallelujah in it Bless you.